Consider this next example. We don't have our terms collected together on one side of the equation, and you might think this 4x squared will move it to the left side with the other two terms. But keep in mind that we collect these terms so that our very next move can be to factor. And when it comes to factoring, we like our leading term to always be positive. I know x squared is going to end up being the leading term. It has the highest exponent. So I, would, I want it to be positive. And currently, where it is on the right side of the equation, it's positive. If I move it to the left side, that's going to become a negative 4x squared. So just because of where the terms currently are, and the fact that I want my leading term to be positive tells me move my terms over to the right side. And it's all so that my x squared term can be positive. It just makes factoring go a lot more smoothly. So back to this problem, I'm moving 6 and negative 10x over to the right side. First, let's cancel this minus 10x with plus 10x, both sides. And we'll cancel minus, or we'll cancel this positive six with minus six, both sides. That's what's going to leave us with a zero. I thought about where these terms will end up so that I can be in descending order, but I want you to take a second and notice that if I wanted to just take this positive six, pick it up and move it to the other side, as soon as I cross the equal sign, I need to change its sign. So positive six cross equals, it becomes negative 6. And negative 10x, pick it up, cross equal sign becomes positive 10x. So there's a little bit of a shortcut there when it comes to us having to do some rearranging. And it definitely will consistently work as long as you keep in mind that crossing the equal sign to the other side of the equation means you must flip the sign of that term that you're moving. Here is really why it works, because we're taking away 6 from each side. It just happens to cancel it from one side, and then we only see the minus 6 on the other side. So a little bit of a shortcut you could use. Just be cautious so that you are staying accurate. Now terms are collected in descending order. The equation equals 0. We are ready to factor. How would we factor? this trinomial. There's a, there's a GCF in there, a 2 we can divide out from each term, leaving us with 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Can we factor this further? We're just bringing in all of our factoring ideas. So what do we do with a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1? This takes a, a few more steps, the kind where we have to first multiply first and third coefficients. Then we have to find a pair of numbers that multiply together also will equal that negative 6, but added together would equal positive 5. Negative 1 and positive 6 is that pair of numbers. Then we have to split that middle term up. That's where we use the negative 1 and positive 6, splitting up that positive 5x into those two new terms so that now we have four terms and we'll do factor by grouping. From the first pair, an x we could divide out to leave us with 2x minus 1. From the second pair, there is a 3 we could divide out, a positive 3, leaving us with 2x minus 1 in parentheses. And it's a good thing we see our binomial factor on both sides. 2x minus 1 is one factor. The other is x plus 3. We still have a GCF out front, and we're still in the process of solving an equation, so we still have it equal to 0. Now that it's factored is the time when we can split this up. A and what about, what should we split up when it comes to solving this equation? We usually look at the different parts that are being multiplied together, and you might wonder about that too. Well, if I split that up into an equation, 2 equals 0, that doesn't tell me anything about x. That's basically, there's no solution there. So a number out front does not lead us to a solution. We saw an example where an x out front definitely, definitely led us to x equals 0. But a number out front, 
doesn't lead us to any solution. Just move on to the next part. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Linear equation we're trying to solve, so I think let's add 1 to each side. Takes us to 2x equals 1, and then finish solving for x, divide both sides by 2, x equals 1 half, our first solution. x plus 3 is the next part. Take away 3 on each side leads us to x equals negative 3, our other solution. There's our solution set, positive 1 half and negative 3. Let's talk about how this equation looks. The left side does appear to be factored, however, it does not equal zero. Definitely, it would be going down the wrong path to try to split these parts up because it does not equal zero. That is a move we can only do when it equals zero. What we would have to do in this case, in order to have all of our terms on one side in descending order, we're actually going to have to multiply this left side out and then bring the 6 over to the left side. So I'm beginning by distributing x. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. I'm, now I'm beginning to see my terms laid out. I can move my 6 over to the left side, so it's x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Now it's in a nice standard form. We can factor x plus 6 with x minus 1 equals 0. Those two parts we can split into separate equations equal to 0 and solve each one. This equation leads us to x equals negative 6. This side leads us to x equals positive 1 and there is our solution set. The next example we're taking the same approach. We like our terms to be collected on one side equal to 0. I'm moving the 49 from the right side to the left side. And that leaves us with 25x squared minus 49 equals 0. We are ready to factor. There is no GCF. So what are our next thoughts about two terms? Well, our next thought should be Perhaps they are squares. Do we have a difference of squares? Definitely we have the difference part. There's a subtract. But are we looking at two perfect squares? Can I come up with what expression to the second power would equal 25x squared? Well, we would need to have a 5 and an x. That 5x to the second power definitely takes us to 25x squared. This side, what quantity to the second power? 7 squared equals 49. Now that we can see those perfect squares, we know how it can be written in factored form. Both sets of parentheses take 5x and 7. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. There it is, factored. So we're emphasizing that even though it's in an equation, it doesn't change what we do for factoring. And once it's factored, we still finish up with, split these up into two separate equations. Our first one, 5x plus 7 equals 0. I can just keep going with this one. We'll take away 7 from each side. Takes us to 5x equals negative 7. Last move, we need to divide by 5 on both sides. x equals negative 7 fifths. And I think good answers when it comes to fractions are that we keep them as improper fractions. We don't like mixed numbers. Of course, always make sure that they are simplified. And I would hesitate about changing these fractions to decimals. I think you're a lot better off just keeping them as fractions. We have another part here to work with. 5x minus 7 equals 0. Solving this, we will add 7 to both sides. And then divide by 5 both sides. Our other solution, x equals positive 7 fifths. There is our solution set.